اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد عدد امواج Resul-i Ekrem ve Nebi-i Muhterem sallallahu aleyhi ve sellem Efendimiz Hazretlerinin aziz fark yönelik mutlaka bu şeriflerine, selamat şerifine getirenlerden ahir ve akıbetlere hayrola. Hâle-i Zuvacı, Tahiret Evladı Resul-i Sağabüzün Efendilerimizin Sayr-i Enbiya Zemmer Resul-i Fihan Hazretlerinin Erman Şeriflerine İrimiz Bilallah Habeş Radiyallahu Anh Efendimizin Şeyhimiz Sahibi Seyf Şiyatlı Ülkerim'e Kıbrıs'a Rabbani Hazretlerinin ve alel husus bu caminin bahisi ve bugüne kadar içerisinden gelmiş geçmiş iman mezun kaynılarının ve kahve ehli imanın ervahı için Allah rızası için en Fatiha Yolcu billahi yine şeytan ve rakim Bismillahirrahmanirrahim İnnallâhu ve melâlâikete ve insanun âlen nebi Ya eyvelezin amr-ı sallim aleyhi ve sellim o teslima Allahümme salli ala seyyidina Muhammed ve ala seyyidina Muhammed Allahu Ekber, Allahu Ekber Allahu Ekber, Allahu Ekber Eşhedü en la ilahe illallah Vessalatu vesselamu ala Resulina Muhammedin ve ala alihi ve sahbihi ecma'in. Nehmedullahi ta'ala ve nastaghfiru ve eşhedü en la ilahe illallah vahdehu la şerike lah. Eşhedü enne seyyidina Muhammedin abduhu ve habibuhu ve resuluhu. Sallallahu aleyhi ve ala alihi ve zvacihi ve sahabi tabi khulafen raşidin mahadin min ba'di. Ve zilammati ala tahkik, ahususun min alamati khulafe Resulü ala tahkik, Umar al-Mu'minin, Hazreti Ebu Bakır ve Umar ve Osman ve Ali. وعلى بك صحاب التابعين رضوان الله تعالى عليهم أجمعين يا أيها المؤمن الحاضرون بتك الله تعالى وتأين الله حمل الذين تقبل الذين هم محسنون الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأمياء المرسلين سيدنا مولانا محمد ولا عليه وصحبه أجمعين All praises are due to Allah Lord of the universes بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم to Allah belongs all praise Lord of the heavens and Lord of the earths, Lord of the worlds. And to him belongs all majesty in the heavens and the earth, and he is the mighty, the wise. Sadaqallah al-Azim. May all peace and blessings be upon the Prophet of the two holy places, the Imam of the two Qiblas, our Wasila in the two worlds the beloved of the Lord of the two Easts and the two Wests, the grandfather of Hassan and Hussein, Sayyidina Muhammad wasalam, and upon his noble family and blessed companions, especially upon the four Khulafa Rashidin, Hazrat Abu Bakr Siddiq, Hazrat Omar Farooq, Hazrat Osman al-Ghani, and Hazrat Ali al-Murtaza, and all those who follow them and honor them and walk in their footsteps until the last day. Ya ayuhal mu'minun, O believers, 
But today is the last Juma of the Islamic year, 1439. One year's calendar is closing. The Sahabi Kiram used to pray at the end of the year and for the beginning of the new year, saying, Ya Rabbi, bring this year upon us with security, Iman, safety, Islam, your pleasure and protection from shaitan. Amen. O believers, our ancestors, from the Sahabi Kiram to the Tabi'in, to the Tabi Tabi'in, all the way to the honored Ottomans. They showed honor and respect to the calendar of Islam. It is one of the things that the Holy Prophet ﷺ mentioned in his last khutbah when he said, O people, the deniers of Allah's power manipulate the calendar in order to make permissible that which Allah forbade and to forbid that which Allah has made permissible. The time has now returned to the position as it was when Allah created the heavens and the earth with a year of 12 months. Four of them are sacred, Zul Qaeda, Zul Hijjah, and Muharram, and Rajab, which lies between Jumada and Sha'ban. And the Prophet of Allah speaks the truth. The calendar, it is one of the foundations of a society, of a civilization. The calendar tells us where we are in time, where we are in relation to what happened in the past and where we are in relation to what is going to happen in the future. We construct our days and our nights around the timings that are given on that calendar. That is why the Muslims, for more than 1,400 years, they have given importance to observing the months as they have been told to us by the Holy Prophet ﷺ. Make no mistake and have no doubt that our calendar is a heavenly calendar. Our calendar, it is a divine calendar. If we build our lives around it, our lives will be in line with the divine laws. But if we construct our lives around days and months that are named after idols and illusion and delusion and shirk, then what kind of life are we going to live? Our Shaykh Sahib al Sayyid Shaykh Abdul Karim al Kibri is here, Rabbani Qadaz al Sir, is saying, so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has granted us this holy month that we are finishing, the month of Hajj. And night, after that, we have a month coming. Right after that, we have a month coming. Another holy month, Muharram. The new year of Muslims in their calendar. New calendar, new year. Muslims new year is coming. From when our holy prophet والسلام, immigrated from Mecca to Medina, that is the beginning of the calendar of the Muslims, worldwide. But every Muslim today, every Muslim country, they are celebrating the kafir calendar, the unbelievers calendar, the imaginary calendar. They imagine something saying, oh, Jesus was born on this day. Imagined. Imaginary calendar, but the Muslims are running to follow. The Muslims individuals, groups, nations are keeping and honoring that calendar. It's not something that is a secular calendar to them too, no. They turned it into secular, but according to them is their belief. It's a Christian calendar, it's not a Muslim calendar. The Muslims are keeping that calendar, mashallah. They are not even knowing what is their new year. So Muslims are passing through the days, not knowing what they are. Passing through 1439, saying, oh, this is 2018. Rajab, saying, oh, this is April. Passing through the anniversary of the Shahadat of Hazrat Omar Farooq, which we just entered yesterday, which was yesterday and saying it's just Thursday. 
Thor's Day, naming after that pagan idol. It is not Allah. It is not. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has honored these days and nights in the calendar. It is our duty as believers to honor them as well. Of course, we live in a society that has different calendars, and the Ottomans have shown that with respect too. In the Ottoman calendar, they have at least four different calendars on the same page. They have not only the Muslim calendar, they also have the Armenian calendar, the Catholic calendar, the Jewish calendar. What have we lost? We have lost our identity and we have taken others, the identity that Allah is not liking. Sahib al Saif, he puts a very heavy word to the ones who don't respect the holy days and nights, saying, Week after week, year after year, I'm saying, Shreem Allah is saying, and we are going to say, the holy days and the holy nights are approaching. In these nights, take it seriously. Take it seriously. It's only five nights a year, not ten. There are 365 days in a year, and there are only five nights that are very holy. You cannot keep up with that? What kind of faith you have then? Where is your faith? Are you going to give me excuses? Give me one million excuses, but it's not good for anything. No excuses can pass for that for a believer. If a believer says, I have an excuse. In 365 days, I cannot save five days for Allah and His Prophet. Then I have doubt about your faith. We are not playing here. We are not here for picnic. We are not here to have only good times and tea parties. We are here to worship. And those who does not want to worship, they have no place with me. They have a very short time. So yes, we have just passed through the day of remembering when Hazrat Omar al-Faruq radiallahu an, the prince of the believers, where he attained the rank of shahid, Faruq al-Azam, the one that so many dogs and hyenas are barking at him and cursing at him for 1400 years. That there are people in this world who hate him so much that they built a tomb for his murderer and they visit his tomb. Such people have been cursed by Allah and his Prophet. Because Hazrat Umar he is one of the greatest ones to ever walk the face of the earth. Imam Jalal Din Suyuti radiallahu an collected 40 hadiths, 40, about the greatness of Hazrat Umar al Faruq. And this is just a drop in the ocean of his greatness. Rasulullah said, Jibrail came to me and I asked, O oh, Jibrail, tell me about the virtues of Umar ibn al Khattab in the heavens. Jibrail said, Ya Muhammad. If I was to tell you the virtues of Umar from the time that Nuh remained with his people 950 years, I would not finish the virtues of Omar. And still, Omar is one of the good deeds of Abu Bakr. Rasulullah said, I am from Omar, and Omar is from me. The truth after me is with Omar wherever he is. Rasulullah said, Allah put the truth on the tongue and heart of Umar. He is al Faruq, the distinguisher through whom Allah separates truth from falsehood. Rasulullah said, Whoever hates Umar hates me. Whoever loves Umar loves me. Allah boasts about the people at the night of Arafah and He boasts about Umar specifically. Allah did not send a prophet except that His nation had a speaker. If there was a speaker in my nation, it would be Omar. The people asked, Ya Rasulullah, how does he speak? Rasulullah said, Angels speak upon his tongue. Hazrat Umar is the answer to the dua of the Holy Prophet. Hazrat Ibn Masud says that the Holy Prophet prayed, saying, Ya Allah, strengthen Islam 
by Umar ibn al-Khattab or by Abu Jahl ibn Hashim. So Allah accepted the dua of Holy Prophet for Umar. So Umar was supported by him. So Islam was supported by him and other religions, they were finished. And Hazrat Ibn Masood is showing the bravery of Hazrat Umar saying, if the Islam of Umar was an opening, then his migration was a victory and his leadership was a mercy. Wallahi, we were unable to pray at the Kaaba until Umar became Muslim. Hazrat Umar was showing the justice of Islam. Hazrat Umar was showing the majesty of Islam. Hazrat Umar was showing the power of Islam. He was a possessor of Haybat and a possessor of Jalal. Sahib al Sayyid is telling us about when he became the Khalifa, saying, when Hazrat Abu Bakr became Khalifa, did he become weak? No. When he was Khalifa, he said, from now on, although I didn't want it, but when this position is given to me now, and you're all saying, okay, from now on, what I say, you must follow. As long as I stay in the way of Allah and His Prophet, والسلام, what orders I give you, you must follow. What I forbid you from, you must run away. And if you do otherwise, I am the Khalifa. He said that to who? To all the Sahabis that were there. And Hazrat Umar radiallahu an went one more step saying to them, now I am the Khalifa. And when he was going to make sohbet to the Sahabi Kiram, he was standing, pulling out his sword and sitting and putting it like that on the floor in front of him and letting the Sahabis to see the sword. And he was saying to them, if you don't listen to what I say through the tongue, I know how to put you back to the line again. To who? Who was he saying it? To the Sahabi Kiram, to the Tabi'in. He said to them, you see the sword? I will not hesitate using this sword to you. Hazrat Abdullah ibn Abbas radiallahu anh said, Remember Hazrat Umar a lot. Because when you remember him, you will remember justice. So we should remind ourselves about the justice of Hazrat Umar. His own son committed a crime according to the Shariat, and his sentence was 180 lashes. Hazrat Umar gave the whip to the Jalat and told him to whip harder than he ever had before. Before the last lash, Hazrat Umar saw that his son was going to die. And he went to him and said, I don't think you are going to survive this punishment. But when you pass away and you meet my Rasulullah, Tell him your father Umar established the law of the Quran on the earth. Tell him that he had established the Sunnati Rasul on the earth. After the son passed away, Hazrat Umar was crying. And the people said, Why are you crying now when he died because of the punishment you decided? Hazrat Umar said, O oh people, you have misunderstood my tears. I am crying for four reasons. I am crying from happiness because I have established Allah's laws out of my fear of Allah. I am crying from happiness because I have established the Sunnah of my Rasulullah. I am crying from happiness because I have saved my son from hellfire. And yes, I'm crying because he is my son and I will never see him again. And still after his son was buried, Hazrat Umar remembered that one lash was still left. 
So he ordered that the grave be whipped one time. That is Farooq al-Azam. That is justice. That is the justice of Islam. That is the justice that Allah mentions in the Holy Quran when he says, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, O you who believe, stand up firmly for justice as witnesses to Allah, even if against yourselves, or your parents, or your relatives, or whether it be against rich or poor, because Allah is more worthy of both. Do not follow your own passions, lest you be unjust. And if you distort justice or refuse to do justice, verily Allah is ever informed of what you do. Sadaqallah al That is a justice that is lost to this world today. This world, this asfal safilin There is no justice anymore. There is only corruption, and there is only oppression, and there is only hearts that have become harder than stone who sees this every single day, and they forget about it. Those with power use that power to completely destroy the powerless. Those with money steal more and more to take the rights of those with none. Those with influence save themselves and their families while they do every crime in the world. The world is in need of another Farooq. We are praying for him to come soon. And yes, Hazrat Umar's strength, it came from his fear of Allah. Our Shaykh was saying, I fear Allah out of my love for Allah. This is the Faruqi way. When Hazrat Umar was making tawaf, he was crying, saying, O oh Allah, if you have written me among the blessed, then keep me there. And if you have written me among the sinful and the cursed, then wipe it away and put me among the blessed. Verily, you wipe away and affirm whatever you will, and with you is the mother of the book. Hazrat Umar was the first one who went to that Sahabi. That Sahabi was left with a list of hypocrites by the Holy Prophet Before the Holy Prophet left this world, he gave a list of the hypocrites that is hiding in the nation. And he gave it to that particular Sahabi. And he said, keep this secret. And when it was known that this Sahabi held that list, Hazrat Umar was the first one to go to him, to pull him aside, crying, begging him, asking, tell me truthfully, am I on that list? That Sahabi did not give that secret away. But it is known that whichever funeral that he did not attend, it is known that that one was a hypocrite. Hazrat Umar, he was the first in remembering his death and his meeting with his Lord. He had a ring which had an inscription saying, death is enough of a reminder, Ya Umar. Hazrat Umar was always ready for his death. He was always making the dua saying, Ya Rabbi, let me be a shahid in your way and allow my death to be in the city of your messenger. His dua was granted. He was granted shahadat while he was leading namaz in Masjid al-Nabawi when the blade of a disbeliever pierced his back. Hazrat Umar's name is honored in the heavens and in the earth forever. Hazrat Umar came to this world he lived his life. He kept his promise to Allah and his Prophet. He sacrificed everything in the way of Allah. We are living in Ahir Zaman. The responsibility of Islam continues. We are walking in the way of one of those who is carrying the secret of Farukul Azam. We must also wake up. We must also walk on that way. We must also establish justice. Our Shah is saying, the Sahabis didn't give up. 
you must hold on together. It is not the time to hate each other. It is a time to love each other for those who believe in the same way. You may have differences. You must put the differences aside. Everyone is created by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and everyone has rights. We must watch out correctly. We must try to do what is for us and try to live with those people who are really believing and sacrificing. Not to fall into our ego, run here and there and think that we are going to change something. It is only our ego. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying to us, Without his permission and without his knowledge, a dry leaf will not fall down from his tree. Whatever is happening, is happening with his permission and his knowledge. The duty for believers is that they must hold on tightly. They must look at what each other's benefits are and must try to protect each other. Holy Prophet والسلام, is saying to us, when one's lands and rights are under attack, all believers must support that one. We lost this a long time ago too. We must come back to our senses, at least to those people with whom we are believing in the same way, in the same tariqat and with the same shaykh. We must hold on together. If we do that, we will be the winner. If we don't do that, then we will be the loser. Allah does not need us. We need Allah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to complete His religion. He does not need us. We need Him. We are asking and begging for Him to make us from those who are going to complete this religion. But the duty is very heavy. We must know. We must try to live according to that. We must try to hold on whatever that is according to that and to know that whatever happens to us, the shahadat is the only thing that is going to save us. If we say the shahadat, if we believe in the shahadat, and if we hold on tightly, then safety is with that shahadat. And the friends of Allah speak the truth. We are asking help to do this work. We are asking help from Allah. We are asking for our names to be written amongst those who have carried the work of Islam in the last days of this world. We are asking to do this work following our Shaykh. We are asking with the dua of Hazrat Umar saying, Ya Rabbi, make us from the very few. Amen. Astaghfirullah, Astaghfirullah, Astaghfirullah, Lazim Lazi, La ilaha illa wa lahi wa kayu wa atubu lahi. La ilaha illa Allah wa ahdahu la sharika la lahu al mulku wa Allah hamdu fi mulku wa shaykhu alayhi. La ilaha illa Allah wa ahdahu la sharika la lahu al mulku wa Allah hamdu fi mulku wa shaykhu alayhi. La ilaha illa Allah wa ahdahu la sharika la lahu al mulku wa Allah hamdu fi mulku wa shaykhu alayhi. La ilaha illa anta subhana illa tu na salih. La ilaha illa anta subhana illa tu na salih. La ilaha illa anta subhana illa tu na salih. Subhan kudus na rabbana rabbana wa rahim tu wara. Subhan kudus na rabbana. Subhan kudus na rabbana. Inna dina illa wa hali islam. Qam salam. Allahumma salam. Allah, <laughs> <laughs> <laughs> <laughs> <laughs> <laughs> <laughs> <laughs> <laughs> <laughs> <laughs> <laughs> <laughs> <laughs> <laughs> <laughs> <laughs> <laughs> <laughs> <